afternoon or good evening everyone this will depend on where you are and what time you are watching this video welcome to today's conversation on Ediversations TV if you are an existing member thank you for being here and making this channel grow and if this is your first time here this is rolling out the red carpet for you do join the family by hitting the subscribe button below and feel free to share this video with others so they can learn too. Now let's dive into today's conversation. Lesson plenary. Come with me. Students are grappling with so many things during a lesson. Things like understanding the learning objective, remembering the key words, following up with what the teacher is saying, which is usually a lot, and processing all that information, bracing for random questions, participating in the main lesson activities, dealing with complex concepts that are hard for them to understand, you name it. Most times, by the time you get to the end of your lesson, chances are that the students have forgotten quite a few things along the way. A common one they usually forget is the learning objective. They are totally blank at the end of the lesson, which is why when they get home and they're asked, what did you learn in math? Or, what did you learn in English today? They can't remember. Please note that it doesn't mean you didn't teach them or that you didn't teach them well. It's just that the lesson had not fully stuck with them. Now, this is where lesson plenaries come to play. A lesson plenary is like a glue that sticks the teaching to the student's brain. By way of definition, a lesson plenary is an activity or a series of activities that a teacher uses either at the end of a lesson which is known as the main plenary or midway through the lesson which is known as the mini plenary to review the lesson objective and consolidate learning it's usually after this consolidation that students start to fully grasp the concept that has been taught because they have had the opportunity to reflect on their learning so what is in this lesson plenary that makes it so important? Let's look at the roles they play in a lesson. Number one, summary. Lesson plenaries usually round off the lesson. It's that part of the lesson that ties everything together. It's like where you prove the worth of all the other class activities you have carried out. It's very important that the lesson objective is revisited and clearly spelled out to the students because that's the reason for the lesson. The lesson objective is the why that the students need to take home. Number two, evaluation. Lesson plenaries help teachers evaluate the whole lesson. Has it gone well? Where are the students on the learning scale? Have most of the students grasped learning or not? The outcome of the lesson plenaries will inform what the teacher needs to do next, whether to reteach certain concepts or spend extra time explaining further to some students. Number three, highlights challenges. Lesson plenaries reveal the areas of the lesson that the students might have found challenging to grasp. The teacher discovers this in the plenary activities. Number four, remedy. Upon discovering those challenges, the teacher then sets out to determine exactly how to bridge the learning gaps identified. Number five, progress. Lesson plenaries help students to reflect on their learning and understand the progress they have made. After a lesson plenary, a student should be able to confidently talk about what he or she has learned in their own way, not just reciting what the teacher had said. Lesson plenaries are not supposed to be when students recite what they have been forced to cram. Instead, it is when students share the real progress that they have made. Number six, feedback. In the plenary sessions, the teacher gives the necessary feedback to the students. For example, there might have been a misconception or misunderstanding that happened during the main lesson. It's in the lesson plenary that the teacher can see this and quickly give feedback by way of correction or redirecting. Number seven, celebration. As an extension of feedback, teachers can celebrate students' progress 
and the general outcome of their learning. Number eight, discussion. Finally, lesson plenaries provide opportunities for further discussions, either between the teacher and the students or among the students, that is group discussions. Now let's look at the features of an effective lesson plenary. Number one, an effective lesson plenary must be focusing on the lesson objective and summarizing the main teaching points. Remember that you want the students going away from that lesson, remembering exactly what they had learned and why they had learned it. This is the process that helps learning stick with them. Number two, a lesson plenary is effective if it challenges students' thinking and gets them talking together. Number three, an effective lesson plenary is adequately planned and organized. It should have been planned during the main lesson planning because it is part of the lesson, not an afterthought or a time filler. Maybe you have finished your lesson before time and then you're just looking for an activity to fill the time. Now, lesson plenaries are intentional. They are planned for and that's what will make them effective. Number four, we can consider a lesson plenary effective if it, is clearly, if it clearly highlights students' misconceptions. And of course, once these misconceptions are identified, the teacher should figure out how to address them accordingly. Number five, finally, an effective lesson plenary gauges the level of learning that has taken place. At the end of a lesson plenary, a teacher should be able to see how much the students have learned and decide whether to revisit any concept. Now let's explore some lesson plenary activities and how they work. Number one, taboo. Teacher gives individual students different keywords to explain based on their understanding of the lesson topic. The catch here is that students are not supposed to mention that same word in their explanation it's taboo to mention the key word while explaining it. That's the fun and interesting part. Now watch how your students figure this out. For one thing, this particular plenary helps students with their use of synonyms. And by extension, this builds their vocabulary. Number two, write an exam question. This works better with the older kids. This plenary is supposed to expose them to likely examination questions and the fun part is that they get to be the ones setting them. For example, if it was a lesson about the duties of a citizen, in the plenary session, ask the students to set, write down the kind of questions they would expect to see in an exam. Now, since one of the functions of plenaries is to correct misconceptions, in the write an exam question plenary activity, the teacher has the opportunity to not only teach students how exam questions are set, the teacher also can go ahead and model how to answer those questions. Now I know that you might wonder, will this not be expo? That's cheating. And the answer would be no. This is because you are not going to be giving actual answers. Instead, you would be modeling how to answer the questions. For example, if a student asks the question, what are the roles of a citizen? The teacher can refine that question and make it a higher order thinking, AKA hot question, and ask instead, how do the roles of a citizen differ from the roles of a non-citizen? Then the teacher goes ahead and explains that in this kind of question, what the student is expected to do is to compare and contrast. You get the drift now? Number three, definition pairing. Here the teacher writes keywords or important terms from the lesson on strips of papers. The definitions of those words are also written down. Then the whole bunch is mixed up and students now pick the strips of papers and now go look for the right partners. The right partners would be those who have either the definition to the keyword they are holding or those who are holding the keyword to the definitions they have. Now you can imagine that this would be a highly engaging activity as students thinking is challenged. Remember that this is one of the features of a plenary. 
challenging students' thinking. In this pairing plenary activity, students are forced to have discussions about their strips of papers. They have to agree first that they are the fitting pairs. You would also imagine that there will be a lot of enforced collaboration, opinion seeking, and polite interaction. Number four, exit tickets. This is usually carried out with post-it notes like this one. And in the absence of these, you can simply use strips of papers and glue them with tape or blue tack. In the exit tickets plenary activity, students write their learning point or points on sticky notes and stick them up on the board or on the wall. This gives the teacher a general idea of what level of learning has taken place. And to make this beneficial for the students, they can all be invited to take a look at their friends' notes and see if they can pick up one or two things to add to their own learning points. They don't necessarily need to go back to their own notes to write these additional learning points. In exit tickets, students can focus their learning points in the following areas. Area one, they can look at new learning. Students simply write down what new thing they've learned for that day or a part of the lesson that really resonated with them. Area two, aha moment. Here they identify a special part of the lesson that made so much impact on them, hence the aha. Area three, action points. Students state the exact step they're going to take next in order to apply their new learning. Number five, give me five. Students give the teacher a high five, but not exactly the way we know it. The give me high five plenary activity involves students raising their hand and showing all five fingers. Now they need to share their learning points, one point for each finger. Their thumb represents what they've learned. The index finger is for them to mention the skill they've learned. For the middle finger, students are supposed to say what they found hard or challenging to grasp. The ring finger represents what they need to improve on. And finally, the pinky is for them to say what they will remember to do next time. So they'll say something like, next time I'll remember to dot all my I's and cross all my T's. And that's how to carry out the give me high five binary activity. Number six, two stars and a wish. Here, a student mentions two things that went well for him or her in the lesson. Then they make a wish, something they wished had happened differently in the lesson. As you would guess, the two stars are the learning points or things that resonated with the students. And the wish represents what they probably didn't understand or what they found really challenging to grasp. Number seven, Pictionary. This is pretty straightforward. Students draw pictures to represent or explain given keywords from the lesson. Number eight, think, pair, share. This activity never gets old. In the binary activity, you ask a general question and then have students think about it individually. Then you pair them to talk about their thinking in relation to the question asked. Finally, the students can now share their collective answers or responses and the good thing about these responses is that they are outcomes of shared thinking and discussion. Number nine, memory game. In this activity, the teacher writes down as many terms or keywords related to the lesson as possible and allows students to study them for 30 seconds or one minute, you decide. Then the words are wiped off and now students are to race against the time and remember, plus write down as many words as they can. This will be more fun if you grouped these students to make it more competitive. Number 10, human graph. Yes, teacher asks a question and then lines up the answers either on the floor or on the wall. Students are to go stand or line up in front of the answers they choose, forming a human graph. Teacher then reads the data they have formed and announces the winners. Again, this reveals misconceptions or areas the students don't understand. Um, and this is an opportunity for the teacher to set things right. Maybe not in the same plenary session because of time constraints, but 
it certainly lets the teacher know the, uh, the gaps to bridge. Number 11, vocabulary musical chairs. If you know how to play musical chairs, then you would know how to play the vocabulary version. In this plenary activity, the teacher asks a question and then starts calling out different answers. The students, just like musical chairs, will dance or move around the chairs. Once the teacher calls out the right answer to the question, students are supposed to find a chair and sit down. Any student left standing is out of the game. And then the teacher removes one chair. Now you do realize that you may have more than one student standing and those would be the ones who did not know the answer at all. But they still need to go out of the game anyway. Whatever is the case, make sure to remove one less chair than the number of students who are still in the game. For example, if you have six students still in the game, you should have five chairs left. That is the competition. Number 12 in the news. This might work better with all the students. They summarize their learning in the style of a newspaper headline or breaking news. For example, instead of a student to ordinarily say he or she learned that opposites attract, they can put it in a news headline like this. Opposite poles attract, making like poles repel. They can even put it this way. Meanwhile, in other news, opposites attract while like poles repel. And it's a wrap. I hope you have picked one or two ideas to implement right away in your class or to share with someone who needs them. Now, wouldn't this video be incomplete or ineffective if I didn't carry out a plenary session? So let me practice what I've just preached and I'm going to use the exit ticket. Your sticky note is your keyboard and you're going to be sticking your learning points in the comment section. Let's go. What are your key takeaways from this video lesson? You can also go ahead and share other observations, suggestions, additions and so on. I'm running along now to read your comments. By the way, did you know that you can ask me to do a video to discuss or explore any topic of your choice? Absolutely. You can share the areas you find challenging in teaching or in education or areas where you have unanswered questions. And I'll go ahead and do a video teaching those topics or answering those questions in detail. Now that you know, let the questions start rolling in. Let the learning continue. Talk to you soon and bye for now.